Greetings, CAD nerds. Evan Alexander here with another Vectorworks tip, trick, tutorial. I'm not sure what this one is. We're going, we're going unscripted today, people. Let's see what happens. Uh, I got a comment from my buddy Wesley Burroughs asking about layers and classes in my drawings. So here you go, Wes. I thought I'd just talk about drawing organization in general. Uh, we're going to look at some old stuff today. This is from 2016, so it's a few years old. I'll tell you, though, the workflow has not changed. I'm using Vectorworks 2020. Again, doesn't matter what version you're using. The philosophy is the same. Um, the overall philosophy in, in any of this stuff with Vectorworks is to keep it as stupid simple as possible at all times. <laughs> I like my drawings to be lean and mean, uh, and I feel like when I start getting into organizational systems and plug-in objects, that's where all the trouble starts. So, um, so Wes, prepare to be underwhelmed, buddy. <laughs> uh, let's take a look. We're in plan view here, and uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. We've got a venue. We've got a set. We've got some audience seating, some press risers. I cannot remember for the life of me why this drawing is upside down. There was a specific reason that we did it. Um, this is designed by Bruce Rogers, Tribe Design uh, 2016, Democratic National Convention. So this was, you know, Hillary Clinton in the white suit and uh, I don't know, simpler times in the world. And uh, so let's take a look. There's not a lot of layers here, and you'll see there's even less classes. This is by design. Like I say, simple is better. Uh, I'm going to switch this over to active only here so that we can just take a quick look layer by layer at what's going on. So here's the whole set. It's all on one layer. Everything is uh, hybrid symbols. So just like all of my workflow, everything is a hybrid symbol. Uh, you know, this is broken down into, uh, you know, like the steps are a symbol and like the main stage is a symbol and these desks are symbols. So, so it is subdivided within the layer that way, but, uh, but that's it. It's all just sitting on one layer. Uh, I have a tutorial on hybrid symbols. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, check it out. Uh, it'll explain everything. I do it for everything, um, all, all the time. Um, so here we go. So the set is just sitting nicely on its own, uh, layer. So, uh, now we have, uh, we have the venue here. The venue is broken up into multiple layers. I, I don't know why. I think this is how it came to me, uh, as like multiple DWGs. And it seemed at the time, like it would be a good idea to keep these separate so that we could, uh, you know, we could have control over what we were doing. I don't know that we ever actually did uh, anything with that, but uh, but here we go. Um, and I'll show you, let's turn off some of this stuff we don't need. Uh, so here, let's go into OpenGL, shaded view. So this is pretty common for my workflow. The venue is 2D. And the set is 3D hybrids so that they all play together. So, um, so I didn't uh, model the whole bowl and everything here. There is some 3D in here. I'll show you that in a few minutes. Um, but this is really normal for me is to you know, make sure that the 2D is nice and clean, sitting on the zero plane, and that the set is then built up from that. This is kind of a weird set because it was built into bleachers. So... Um, uh, shout out to uh, All Access for figuring that one out. So, um, so you can see though when we go to hybrids, it doesn't matter. Everything looks nice and clean, and you can still see kind of what's uh, what's going on. So, so the venue. Uh, back to the layers here. So the venue, all these two D. These are just sitting on their own layers. Uh, in normal shows, there's really one layer that says venue for me. <laughs> this one just happens to be I don't know fancy. Um, so then we've got our audience seating, uh, and, you know, kind of press tables and, uh, camera platforms. So, uh, all of that is, uh, this is what house seating and press. It's got a date on it too, because it's probably changed about 6,000 times. Um, so that's on its own layer again, mostly so I can just turn it off when I'm not looking at it and working on it. Uh, you'll see that a, a good chunk of this is 3D, like the audience seating. 
And, uh, well, it sure looks like a good chunk of this is only 2D. So there you go. It's a, it's a hybrid of a hybrid. Uh, we've got our overhead scenery, for lack of a better term. And this would be rigging, lighting, audio, uh, anything, uh, I know you're surprised, anything hanging in the air. Again, it's all hybrid stuff. So it's, uh, it's 3D when we need it, and it's nice, clean 2D when we need it. Uh, center lines. This is a very sexy layer here. I always do a center line uh, left and right, zero, zero, and I put them on their own layer so that A, uh, I can control visibility of them in my viewports because sometimes you don't want to see them, uh, but mostly so that I don't accidentally grab it and drag <laughs> and, and move it and screw everything up. Uh, we've got a nice section 2D layer here, which we'll talk about in a little bit, and an elevation layer, which dun, 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 we will also talk about in a little bit. So um, actually, I lied. Let's go right into the section 2D. So what the hell is that? Because it certainly looks like a line, doesn't it? Well, all I've done here is I have taken the section view of the venue here, this is the U.S. Bank Stadium. And I've just tilted it upright. Um, and I, I've actually lined it up uh, with the other layers here. Let's turn off everything that we don't need. And uh, so this is actually lined up correctly with the plan view. And so the idea is that if we go into a side view of our set here, I'll go open GL so you can see it a little bit better. This is now actually lining up with the section of the whole venue. So I didn't have to model the whole space, um, but we still are gonna get these nice kind of good looking, clean kind of 2D section views here if we go to the sheet. We can see here, yeah, here it is. It needs updating, but you get the idea, right? So um, so I love this trick. I do this all the time. Uh, this is a great time saver, and uh, it'll just it'll help you when you just don't either have the information you need or you don't have the time. Um, and it's just a great way to make it, you know, kind of look like, everything is sitting in this kind of 3D world. So it's the same gag as working on a 2D ground plan. It's just that now you're kind of doing it with a section, right? Um, and so that's it, dude. <laughs> it's like, like I say, really simple. Let's take a look at classes. I, I know I, I said I would talk about elevations, and I will. I'm going to come back to that. Here's the classes. It's all really dumb and simple. There's just not a lot going on here. Um, and again, this is by design. So what do we have here? Um, well, we've got, uh, it looks like we've got our mezzanine full detail. Oh, a mezzanine outline. Yeah, so this set, you know, there's a lot of layers and levels and things are stacked and uh, there's a lot of different height changes in this one. So I think that there's one version here where the mezzanine, which is this thing, is drawn full, and it's all the 3D. And then there's another version, if we turn this, oh, I'm sorry, the mezzanine is back here, where it's just outlines. And uh, here, so this, uh, oh, that's Mez 2. All right, so I'm screwing everything up here. Mez 1, and we'll turn that off, and Mez 2, well, I guess it is up here. I don't know what I'm talking about, people. It's been a long time since I looked at this drawing. But I think the overall idea is that in some views, I want to have the full 3D. And in other views, I maybe just want like a dashed line. And so this, by swapping out which kind of uh, class I'm using, I'm able to kind of uh, change and isolate here. Here, let's go active only so we can see what I'm talking about. And there's nothing there, so that's why I'm totally full of crap here. Let's look at this one. And yeah, there's nothing there either. This is all going so well. Let's go back to this. All right, you get the idea. It's really simple though, that's it, kind of it. Um, and then really, so classes for me are more about visibility. There's a whole tunnel system underneath this set here and so if we turn this on you can see escape pattern uh hallways here 
And uh, it's, I just threw it in its own class because uh, in some drawings, I'm calling this out specifically and I want to see it. 99% of the time, I don't want to see it. And so I have that turned off. Also, um, this set changed. Uh, we changed the shape of the front of this uh, depending on which night. So uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, this was the configuration. Thursday night, the night that like Hillary made her big speech, I think we had a slightly different configuration. So again, I'm just using classes here. So event night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that's what we're seeing. If we turn that off, yeah, the whole front of the set is going to disappear. And then if we turn on the Thursday, yeah, so then we go back. Here we go, classic Bruce Rogers, uh, the kind of sweeping stairs kind of up, and we change some seating. Um, and so that's it. Like, uh, I'm just using classes so that in our packet here, I've got, you know, Monday through Wednesday, and then I've got, you know, kind of Thursday, Friday. So, um it's. I know people love to go bananas with labeling and classing everything, and if that's what you do, awesome. I hate it. <laughs> I want as few layers and as few classes as possible at all times. One, just so I can stay organized, but also I'm going to share this drawing with a ton of people. So the shop's going to get it, lighting, rigging, audio, uh, people working with like press and seating, the venue. And I don't want all these really complicated systems for those people to try to kind of dig through, just like they don't want all that crap for me. So, you know, lighting is going to put in their own layers and stuff, or if they send it to me, I'll keep it kind of isolated. I do tend to prefix everything. So like scenery hyphen, whatever it is, scenery hyphen, you know, the scenery hyphen. And that way, anybody else working with the drawing, at least they know, okay, like this is part of scenery and I can delete it, I can turn it off, or I know, you know, kind of where to look. I appreciate it when other design teams and creatives do the same thing and send it back to me. So it's like LX hyphen, you know, front right, LX hyphen truss, whatever it is. So please, people, remember you're sharing documents. Be nice to the other people <laughs> around you. So... Um, okay, what else? Now, uh, I did, after all of that lie with the sections, I did actually build out a good chunk of this in 3D. Here we go. Um, it looks like I only built half of it. And, and actually, you know, this was a symmetrical, uh, this is a symmetrical venue. So I think I actually built a quarter of it and then, uh, mirrored it. And then, you know, we probably mirrored it again. Um, but, um, but you know, there wasn't enough detail in what I built out here for this to work for the section. I didn't build the grid and the catwalks and the jumbotron and, you know, lighting positions, HVAC, all of that stuff. This I think really was more like backdrop for renderings. Um, and so I think you can see here, if we go to some of the sheets where, you know, we have, um, uh, let's see here. We have kind of our overall ground plan showing everything. And then uh, there's probably a tighter shot of the stage. Yes. So here's a tighter shot of the stage. Uh, and then we have our section, which is, again, the 3D in front of the 2D. And But then I do have these like OpenGL renders. So at this point, I probably hadn't moved this over to Cinema 4D yet. And uh, we haven't done like renderings with light beams and video content. And, you know, this is kind of early design development phase. So there's just a bunch of 3D views here. I'm not going to update this because I'm sure it will take forever. Uh, but you can see, so I'm using these, you know, so this is where the 3D kind of comes into place. You can see, you know, there's huge holes in it. But that's okay. Everybody's really focused on, like, what's happening here and, you know, how many video tiles are we actually talking about? Um, and nobody's worried yet in this drawing about the grid. So, so that's okay. Um, and then, so, uh, so there is this 3D layer. And so then there is this other layer here called elevations. Uh, and so what is this? There's probably not a lot in this drawing because um, this drawing didn't get detailed out too much with elevations. But I tend to then, so if I am detailing scenery, like doing, right, like front view, side view, sections, 3D, with notes and annotations, 
all of that is happening on the elevations layer. And so since everything is a hybrid symbol, right? So I can use this out in the main drawing and populate it, but then a copy of it, a duplicate of it is sitting right here, an instance of it, I should say, is sitting right here on the elevations layer. And so this is a clean layer for me to then lay out things like front view, side views. I think here I was like, what? I was, oh, I was building telephones <laughs> uh, for this. And, um, and you know, so you're, you're even some of your detail work can be hidden here. And then I'm not trying to detail this, you know, from the master drawing where it's in the middle of, you know, bleachers and all this other kind of stuff. Here's some details, some desk details. This is all very technical stuff here, people. This looks like a railing uh, for the upper levels on the video walls. I always make my video walls blue just so that uniformly when you look at the drawings, you know what it is. This person looks thrilled to be here. Uh, sitting at their very advanced desk. So um, anyway, I just keep this all on its own layer and then I viewport it from here. So if we look at like, uh, la, 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 let's see, oh, state markers. Yeah, let's look at that. Awesome. Here it is. Yeah, so right. So then I get into annotations, right? I always do the annotations uh, on the sheet layer. I never do it on my design layers. Keep it clean. And, uh, you know, and then you can add all this stuff in here and kind of lay it out. You know, that's, that's really it. Let's jump over this. So this is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony from, I don't know what year. We'll look at the title block. Uh, this is probably like, you know, 2016, 2017 here. I think this is the Barclays Center. Yeah, this is probably the Barclays. And uh, so it's, it's, it's all the same kind of thing going on here. So uh, we've got our 3D set and uh, we've got our audience seating and like camera platforms. Uh, it's all sitting on top of a 2D ground plan. And then again, I've got these 2D sections. This time they're actually lined up like right on top of the drawing because I think we do east-west and north-south sections of this one. And so if you were to look at these sheets here, uh, right, so again, here's the section. So I didn't build this venue, though weirdly I do have a model of it, uh, but we didn't use it on this one. And uh, so here's our 3D set and audience and camera platforms, and you know we're doing all that good section-y sightline stuff here. But this version of the section, it's just 2D laid up nicely. And then that works, that other view works really nicely for a front view, which is, you know, basically just a section going the other direction. But now we can see our set and then we can see where it all kind of sits in here. Uh, 2016, this is March 2016. So there you go. Also, Bruce Rogers tribe design uh, work. And uh, so the layout here is very much the same here. Let's go back in and just quickly buzz through this. I think you get the point now, right? So the set, all the scenery, everything, hybrid symbols all on their own layer, just all on one layer. And then all the seating. I, I tend to do seating and cameras all on one layer. You can divide this apart if you want to, totally up to you. This is not a, this is not a camera crazy show. Um, so there's more emphasis on seating, as you can imagine, this is like VIP seating. So like, where is Ronnie James Dio going to sit? Um, and so that changes a million times. And then, um, and then what? Oh, rigged video. Yeah. Yeah. So there's some, we got some flying video, uh, overhead scenery. It looks like there's no overhead scenery in this show, which is weird. I've thrown audio, uh, again, hybrids all onto its own. Uh, my center lines are, as always, isolated onto their own layer. And then we've got this elevations layer here. Uh, you know, this is a show about rectangles, so nothing really groundbreaking here. But we've got our elevations and plan views of all the different components that were being built. And here's, like, probably curtains on truss. And, uh, you know, here's the deck, the actual kind of stage deck. Um, and so my sheet layer elevations are cut from here so that I've got this isolated, I've got it squared up. Here's these like proscenium trusses that we had built. And so I'm not 
trying to pull that data from here, though you could, but it's still, there's still stuff on there that I don't want. Um, and again, in trying to avoid getting into eight bajillion classes, then, uh, you know, I don't kind of go in and subdivide. This jib is on a class and this curtain is on a class. Like I say, if that system works for you, that's great. Uh, me, I want it like dumbed down to the least amount of shit possible at all times. Um, so uh, what do we have here? Oh, floor. Yeah, right. Floor uh, uh, table numbers. So I throw those onto looks like a, their own class because there's probably some views where we don't really want to see it and we're not, you know, kind of focused on that so much. There might even be a sheet. Uh, I don't know. Um, well, there are definitely sheets here then for band layout. So, uh, you know, the bigger drawings are for, and this is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So you've got this really, who do we have here tonight? Let's see. We've got Chicago. We've got NWA, uh, Deep Purple, Cheap Trick, and Steve Miller Band. <laughs> What's an awesome night of music. Um, so these now are classed uh, into their own layouts. Um, and so this way, is there a layer for band layouts? There is. There's a layer here for band layouts, which looks empty. It's probably because everything's turned off. Let's turn on Steve Miller. Where did it go? Here we go. Here's Steve Miller stuff. And uh, we'll turn that off. And here's the band layout for NWA. And so this way, right, just for viewport uh, sake, then I'm kind of doing all of that stuff uh, through classes. Audio's on its own class, just so I can turn it on and off if it's getting in my way. And, and that's it, you know? The shop, they're gonna do drawings of the deck layout and the legging and the cross bracing. They don't want that from me because I'm not gonna do it right. Lighting, I don't have any of that lighting information. There are plenty of times where lighting gives me their drawings and I unfold it in. I love that so that I get the, you know, the right fixtures in the right places. And then they would be on their own layers for lighting. Uh, but this drawing, uh, either I never got it or you know, this is before I got it. So things are kind of laid out that way. Um, let's take a quick look here at, um, let's just look at the sheet here for a second. Um, so here's our kind of ground plan viewport. Just for clarity, I'm just going to throw this off to the side for a second so we can look at our actual sheet. So um, Bruce Rogers lives in an 11 by 17 world, so that's probably what this is. But um, but I, when I say I don't use these like plug-in object tools, I, I, I really mean it. Like, uh, for example, the title block tool. I hate the title block tool. Uh, it drives me crazy and it makes me insane. So here's how I do my title blocks. My title block is basically a symbol. <laughs> um, so here, if we grab it, you'll see that it's a symbol. Not all of the information is in the symbol, but a good chunk of it is in the uh, is in the symbol. So I set this up from the beginning, right? Our borders, we've got, you know, the logo and, you know, disclaimer, boilerplate, you know, what's the show? That stuff stays the same. Um, and, and I make sure that the date is, uh, you know, is part of this symbol as well. This way, uh, you know, I know people love to do like, uh, you know, date modified, date modified, revision. I, I don't do any of that stuff. I just have one date in here. And so because it's part of the symbol, if I update this, it's going to update in the whole packet, right? So this stuff is going to be the same on every single sheet. Scale, you know, option number, sheet number, what the drawing is, that all is going to change per sheet. And so this is literally just a piece of text floating here. And so, you know, I go in here and I say, oh, okay, this is sheet two. And the scale is blah, blah, blah. So, I, you know, if the title block tool works for you, awesome. Uh, certainly not opposed to that. Me, I hate it. It makes me crazy. I don't want to touch it. So I keep this all, you know, really simple. It's a 2D symbol, and then it's a bunch of, like, free-floating text. That's it. So, Wes, I hope that helps you out a little bit. I think, you know, the secret is, is be lean and be mean. And, uh, 
you know, just try to keep it as simple as possible. Really keep in mind, especially on these kinds of like corporate, you know, or like live TV shows, your drawings are going to be shared by uh, a ton of people and uh, they will absolutely appreciate if you, you know, keep it like super simple and, uh, you know, don't mess around with like eight bajillion classes. So uh, I'm sure I will get angry comments on this one. So keep the torches and pitchforks at bay. All right. That's all I got. Thanks, everybody. See you soon.